بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت لليم الحكيم رب شهلي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفكه قولي رب يسر ولا تؤسر وتممه لنا بالخير يا فتاه يا فتاه يا فتاح قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا توبوا إلى الله توبة نسوحة Brothers and elders, mothers and sisters in Islam, we are grateful, we are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this bounty and this blessing that he has gathered us on this blessed, the noble day of Jumu'ah in the blessed month of Ramadan in his house. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his mercy and rahmah upon all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously keep us in his mercy and his rahmah. May he provide us a shade beneath his arsh on the day when there will be no shade except for the shade of the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, many weeks ago we had been speaking about the arriving of the month of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan came quickly upon us. We're almost through an entire ashra of the month of Ramadan. And the time is going away from us very quickly. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the last qasam, the last oath, the last promise that he takes in the Qur'an is wal asr. The qasam of t- away from us, will Allah return for anyone else. Brothers and sisters, I recited in front of you a portion of an ayah of the Qur'an from the 66th chapter of the Qur'an known as Surah At-Tahreem. The verse of the Qur'an is verse number 8. There is a message in this very beautiful ayah of the Qur'an that is the theme of this khutbah for today. While I was thinking and I said, you know what, Jummah is something special. And Ramadan is even more special. So what is a message that I can leave for myself and all of the people who will attend? And I remembered a story when I was either 16 or 17. I had just begun to drive. I saw something and I still remember till today. And I recollect the thought and I really wanted to share with you a story. It was a time that I just began driving. I was sitting with my father... We were in Brooklyn going towards Queens. For those who know that area, the Beachway area, it's always with traffic. I remember I was driving. It was the first time I had ever taken a long trip with my father sitting next to me. The traffic was bumper to bumper. There was a car in front of me. I still remember so clearly. It said church bus. Messages for remember so. I didn't really understand what it said at that time. But over the years, I began to realize the meaning of that sticker. And that sticker said, But God U-turns. You may not be able to make the U-turns outside. When you go outside, you may get pulled over for a U-turn. You should have gone around and you should have made a turn. Why did you make that U-turn? You can get pulled over so easily. But wallahi, that message remains with me. Since I was 16 or 17, And I saw that sign on that highway and I began to remember and realize this in my life and how I can relate that with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That God allows U-turns. You can never be too away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And based upon this, I want to share with you few ayats of the Quran and few ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And brothers and sisters, what better time for that U-turn than the month of Ramadan? What better time to find that closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kareem verse number 8. Ila Allah. Come back, come back towards your Rabb. Tawbatan nasuha. A sincere repentance of your life. You come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter how far we have gone brothers and sisters. But we will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The most merciful. Who will accept us in every condition. In any condition. I don't want to put down the love and the respect of parents. But there may even come a time that our own mothers and our own fathers may part away from us and say, it's enough. We can't take enough of you. We cannot be with you and part away from us. But my Allah says, come to me, I will always keep you. I will always bring you closer towards me. I will always find you more closer than you will ever find me. نَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ Our own jugular vein, Allah is closer towards us. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in this very, very beautiful ayah of the Quran, O oh, those who have believed, do not worry about your sins. Brothers and sisters, today is not a, to uplift our spirits that we can still find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes we begin to think that I have sinned so much I can't ask Allah for forgiveness. We are wrong. There is no sin that can stop the mercy of Allah. There is no sin which can say that we make that turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. O those who believe, tubu ilallah. Find the closeness of Allah. Seek Allah's forgiveness. And do what? Tawbatan nasuha. Be sincere in your approach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hassan al basri rahmatullah alayhi, in the commentary of this ayah of the Quran mentions that the word nasaha has multiple meanings. It means sincere. To be very sincere from your heart to come closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only because it's Ramadan, I can ask Allah for forgiveness and I'll do whatever I want. No, O oh Allah, I want to truly change myself. O oh Allah, I really want to come closer towards you. That's one meaning. The second meaning, Hassan al-Basri rahmatullah said, is the word nasaha in something which has been ripped. When a child is playing outside, they fall down, they rip the piece of clothing, and they come mother or the father, whoever it is, they patch and they stitch the ripped pieces of the clothing. That stitching of the clothing is in Arabic is known as nasahatan. The patching of ourselves with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Leave no gaps between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters. And that is what the month of Ramadan gives us. A time, opportunity, and a moment to find the closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to share with you three quick hadith of the Prophet sallallahu as a take back home message today, insha'Allah. First hadith is the hadith of Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhum. Anas radiallahu anhu said that once the Prophet sallallahu gathered us, and this hadith is from Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim, Imam Nawawi mentioned this in the second chapter of Riyadh al-Saliheen. So Anas radiallahu anhu said, our beloved Prophet sallallahu gathered us and he said, O oh my companions, do you know how pleased Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when one person comes back and repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said, Oh Allah, enough. Oh Allah, I have, li- I have li- lived enough of my life. Brothers and sisters, I don't re- if I don't recall if I mentioned this before, a few years ago I was blessed to be in Hajj. I was standing next to the Kaaba. I was holding the Kaswa and that was the ghilaf, the clothing of the Kaaba. Allah for a dua that there was a man standing next to me who was making dua and he was crying so loud. His dua was in Urdu, my paternal and maternal language. So I understood what he was saying. This man was speaking with so much passion that I forgot to make my own dua. And I only said Amin on this man's dua. And you know what this man was saying? He was saying in Urdu, Oh Allah, I am tired of committing sins. Oh Allah, I need to come back to you. Oh Allah, I have become tired in disobeying you. Oh Allah, I want to come close to you. Oh Allah, I'm tired of sinning. Oh Allah, I want to come closer towards you. I couldn't make my own dua. The only thing I could do was say ameen on the words of this man. So brothers and sisters, Anas radiallahu anhu said, Oh my sahaba, he gathered us, the Prophet gathered us. And he said, Oh my sahaba, do you know how pleased Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is? When one person seeks Allah's forgiveness. Sahaba said Allah knows and his Rasul knows best. We don't know. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu said in an analogy, a metaphor, example for the Sahaba. Hadith of Al-Bukhari and Muslim. The Nabi of Allah Sallallahu said these words are from Muslim. A man left his house on a camel with food and clothing and he took a journey. So he lost the, and he lost his camel as well while he was looking for a path. No food, no water, no clothing, no way and means of survival. There's nothing left for this man. And wallahi, brothers and sisters, these are the words of my Habib Rasulullah Sallallahu to his Sahaba. So this man lost everything. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said the only thing this man could do was await death. While he laid down, closed his eyes, knowing that there's nothing left for him. And he's waiting for moth and death to come any time because there's nothing for him. Hunger and thirst and nothing of survival. The Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said, this man opened his eyes. And to his utter amazement, he sees the lost camel in front of him. He sees the water, 
He sees the food, he sees the means of reaching someone else for help. And Rasulullah Sallallahu said, this man became so pleased and overjoyed with this that he screamed loud and he said, Oh Allah, you are my slave and I'm your Rabb. And the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu said, it was because he was so amazed and he was so caught in this feeling that he didn't even know what he was saying. And said, Oh Allah, enough obedience, enough of cheating, enough of lying, enough of, going, of wrong. Oh Allah, now I need to come towards you. The Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, My Allah is more pleased than this man finding his lost camel. My Allah is more pleased than this man finding his lost camel. Second hadith that I want to share with you. Hadith of Abu Musa al-Ashri radiallahu anhu. Hadith of Sahih Muslim. The Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Every single night, not Ramadan, every single night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extends the hands of His mercy and rahmah and waits for those who committed sins during the day that maybe at night they will come towards me and ask for forgiveness. And every single morning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extends the hands of His mercy and rahmah for those who, who committed sins during the night that they may come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, the month of Ramadan is that very particular month. We cannot be perfect. Rasulullah sallallahu said, "Kullu uh, The Prophet of Allah sallallahu said, "Kullu bani Adam khattaun." The Adam will commit sin. We cannot be sinless. We're not perfect. We're not angels. But the best of those are who ask Allah. These are the two steps that we need to take. And wallahi, for those who make these intentions. Allah is so kareem, He's so merciful, that the angels who scribed and wrote the sins, Allah will make them forget. The body parts which committed the sins, Allah will make them forgive, forget. The places where the sins were committed, Allah will make them forget. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful, most merciful of the merciful that we will find amongst the earth itself. Another hadith, brothers and sisters. Famous hadith we have heard so many times. Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned Abu Sayyid al-Khudri radiallahu anhu reports Hadith of al-Bukhari and Muslim That there was a man Who killed 99 people We must have heard this so many times brothers and sisters But a reminder for all of us That it's never too late To take that step and utterance It doesn't take too much The Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said A body, a person Who sheds the tear with the fear of Allah Can never enter inside the fire of Jahannam a person learns to repent. The first to step towards seeking of forgiveness is the remorse within our own heart. So one other hadith and then I will conclude. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, A man will change. I can ask for forgiveness. He reached an individual. Can I be forgiven? For so many people would say, Of course you cannot be forgiven. And wallahi brothers and sisters, we are no one to make judgment for anyone's life. We live today in a way that we judge others, brothers and sisters. We can't even control our own selves. How are we there to judge others? How do we even know that people who said Umar cannot accept Islam, the animals can accept Islam of Mecca, but for that same man, Rasulullah said, If there was a person after me with prophecy, it would have been you, O Umar, but the doors of prophecy are closed. Allah can change anyone. Do not look down at anyone. Do not look down at your own self. But I'm too far away and I can't find the closeness of Allah. We're never too far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this man went to someone and said, can I be forgiven? He said, of course not. 99 people, as they say, you want to go hajj now? After doing all this, accepting our deeds. Only if people were accepting our deeds. So this man also killed him. And said, you know what? Let me make it 100. But that talab and that desire was still inside this man. This doesn't justify him killing the people. But I'm talking about the repentance of this man. But desire inside his heart, I want to change. I want to come closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He finds a scholar and he said, of course you can be forgiven. But do two things. Make that sincere repentance. And leave the path of disobedience. Leave those that you associate with who are involved in haram and wrong. Leave the company of bad and join the company of good you may be forgiven. The Nabi of Allah Sallallahu said, this man said, yes, I will not even go back home. I will not even return to the sinners. I will go and travel towards the righteous. He began to travel. Hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Al-Bukhari wa Muslim, authentic hadith. 
The angel of death came while he was in the middle of a journey. The angel of death came and took his soul and he passed away right there in the middle of a journey. Now, subhanAllah, the angels are saying, he's from amongst the people of Jannah. He has repented. The others are saying, no, he's the people of Jahannam because he has not gone towards the righteous at the moment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the third angel and says, count the distance between the two places. Count the distance between the two places. If he's closer to the sinners, take him to the fire. If he's closer to the righteous, take him towards Jannah. Hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu brothers and sisters, the reason why I mention this hadith, the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu mentions that with the mercy of Allah, Allah extended the distance between him and the sinners. One hadith in Sahih Muslim mentions that when this man and the last nerves of his body and the last breath of his body was going, hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions he had one breath left inside of him. One breath left inside of him. And the hadith mentions, as soon as he fell to the ground, he dragged himself to the righteous. He dragged himself. That one breath he had, he said, you know what, I'm still going to try. And because of this, Allah forgave this individual. Brothers and sisters, month of Ramadan is the month of finding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Month of Ramadan is the month of closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now you ask me a question. The question is, how do I repent? It should be a question from you. Imam Nawi rahmatullah in his kitab Riyadh al-Salihin, second chapter, first line mentions, there are three conditions of tawbah. Do three things, Allah will even forgive your kabira and major sins. Number one, remorse in your own heart. Feel guilt that, oh Allah, I made a mistake. Don't think that you did not make that mistake. Oh, it just happened. Feel that guilt. Oh Allah, I made that mistake. It was my wrong. Number two, ask Allah for sincere repentance. Oh Allah, I have no one to ask for forgiveness. I'm never going to go back to that again. Oh Allah, I did it. But I know I was a sinner. But oh Allah, I'm never going to go back to this. If a person repents with these three conditions... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive the greatest of the sins of this individual. And then Imam Nawawi mentions, if a sin is committed between this person and another individual, another person, then you add the fourth condition. You seek that person's forgiveness. You ask that person for forgiveness so that Allah can forgive Allah, the haqq of Allah, and al ibad as well. So brothers and elders, mothers and sisters in Islam, I, 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 I conclude by saying this. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us in the month of Ramadan. Hearts are soft. The rahmah of Allah is here. Our hearts are attached to the houses of Allah. This is the best time to seek Allah's forgiveness. Oh Allah, enough of our past. Oh Allah, give me the ability to follow that straight path. Sirat al ladina an amta alayhim ghayr al maghdubi alayhim wal al That straight path that we ask Allah, let's make this intention today. Within your own hearts. You don't have to say it loud, but within your own heart, you seek Allah's forgiveness. You ask Allah's mercy, and you leave this gathering knowing that you have been forgiven. You leave this gathering with a hope that Allah has message, and I conclude that. Number two message, brothers and sisters. Allah has kept us in ease and comfort. May Allah keep us in ease and comfort. But brothers and sisters, there are so many people across the globe, our own brothers and sisters, who are going through turmoils and difficulty. And even those of other faiths are going through so much difficulty and hardship, I humbly request you, in the month of Ramadan, keep them in your prayers. Keep them in your prayers. When we are enjoying our iftars, when we have so much to eat that we become tired of eating, that we cannot even stand up to make our taraweeh, remember our brothers and sisters who do not even have a single date to open their fast. I remember a person who called a sheikh in Saudi and he said, Sheikh, I want to ask you a sincere question that I do not have a single date to open my fast. Can Allah still accept my fast? Can Allah accept my fast? I don't have a date to open my fast. This was a sincere question from an individual that they have nothing but they are still fasting. So, so many people across the globe, please remember them in your dua. Avoid yourself from israf and overspending in this particular time and utilize those moments to provide for those who are in need. Maybe helping them, Allah will also accept your, your hasanat and rewards as well. My third message, and I'll finish inshallah, will turn towards and our future generations for years now. I humbly request you. The Nabi of Allah Sallallahu was the most generous of the generous people on the face of this earth. But in the month of Ramadan, his generosity increased. Sahaba said, the generosity of the Prophet ﷺ was much more in the month of Ramadan than any other month. 
I humbly request you that if all of us, I know you hear this all the time, but I ask you that for you to give for the sake of Allah in the month of Ramadan for your masjid is full of fruit and full of blessings. You have three Jummahs left now, more or less to an effect. Utilize these Jummah and other times to spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to initiate this. It's not that it is something that I want to show others, but it's something that I want to initiate. You speak and then you tell others to do. I initiate this cause and I have brought something as starting with $100 from some of the brothers, whoever you can, please do this for the sake of Allah in the month of Ramadan. Start this from your side, investment for yourself and for your children. So I humbly request you, before you leave, spend for the sake of Allah in the month of Ramadan, for the barakah and blessings in your life. May Allah accept from us, may Allah give us tawfiq to act upon goodness and khair. Allah us to live our life according to the Quran and the sunnah of Rasulullah Two quick announcements before inshallah we finish. Tonight we